see what, what type of boilers are they are in the atmospheric uh, natural gas boilers. Thanks to the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, Earth Keepers 2 is helping reduce airborne mercury by assisting northern Michigan religious communities as they reduce energy consumption in their homes and houses of worship. 40 audits uh, across the Upper Peninsula. Um, to date, we've completed uh, walkthroughs at 17 churches, so we have 23 to go. We are right on schedule according to the, the grant timeline, although we are going to be increasing our activity over the summer. We expect to complete all 40 audits by the end of October. Their average efficiency, um, but they look newer, they look, they're nice boilers, they're clean. I think the thing is set at uh, 59. Yeah, 59. We've got a wood stove in here. Oh, okay. Try to keep that Sort of heats it up. So yeah, set back all the time. Yeah, <laughs> continual setback, wood supplement. The solar project goes on this roof, south facing roof, it's perfect for that. And then all along the south side of the building we'll have this wildflower garden extended. This is the community garden area and we're just starting with four this year. We could go farther into the yard. We're just going to grow vegetables for the food pantry. There's tomatoes, green beans, there's a row of cucumbers and there's some zucchini and that's lettuce on the end. And each one will have a variety of vegetables. We're down at the uh, Messiah Lutheran Church uh, basement, the boiler room. And, uh, this is the boilers for the sanctuary, and as well as the water, water heater. Earth Keepers 2 is an interfaith community garden and energy conservation initiative across the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. We brought it to council prior to accepting the invitation to have this audit done and the council, of course, was very receptive, opportune for us because we're in the midst of a building renovation project anyway and uh, update the building and renovate the building anyway. And particularly today with our increasing environmental concerns, using uh, lighting and heating sources that are friendly to the environment is also very important. This project was based on, the, uh, on our desire to decrease the amount of mercury uh, in the Great Lakes Basin. And one way to, to do that is to burn less coal. One way to burn less coal is to use less energy. The less energy that's needed, the less coal that needs to be burned, the less pollution or less mercury that's being created. And this is a, a toxic reduction EPA grant. And our, our main goal is to reduce the amount of mercury going into the Great Lakes. Our best way to do that through energy savings is to decrease the amount of electricity being required by each of the churches. Tell me about the congregation awareness and how that fits into the energy audit. Our goal beyond helping the churches become more energy efficient is then to share that information with each church's congregation because each congregant obviously lives somewhere. They, they use up their own energy uh, in their home and their apartment and by becoming more aware of how each individual can use less energy increases the impact of the grant program by those kinds of individual actions of going home and saying well yeah we really haven't looked at our uh, how what kind of lights we're using or how much heat we're using and you know if we can if we begin to uh, look at our own activity that we may in fact be able to, to, to make some changes that will in fact will res result in less energy being used we'll save some money and we will too prevent more pollution from being created by using less energy they look newer, they look, they're nice boilers, they're clean and can't be that old. You know when they were installed, is that about right? Somewhere about 12, 13 years ago? Sounds about right. The thermostat will try and combat it and it'll be coming on and coming off and it'll get, it gets uncomfortable. <clears throat> what that reset control does is it senses it and says, oh, okay, it's 40 degrees out today, we only need the water to be 140 degrees. So it only allows the boiler to heat the water to that temperature. But it saves energy in the long run. So it's, yeah. it's normally, it's a, it pays for itself pretty quickly. I, I compare it to a clock thermostat. <coughs> clock thermostats pay for themselves quickly. The boiler reset controls do too. They're, okay. they're a good device. And I don't see one on here. A thick report, but there's a lot of information in it. It's really we'd heavy. Like to read really heavy on information. Um, there will be numbers, you know, data in there, cost savings, payback stuff too. But it's really meant as a, uh, a report to, to really educate you about uh, energy efficiency, energy conservation, uh, color graphics, pictures, charts. Charts. Because of being involved in this program, um, it's going to be a commercial grade report, so it's going to be a lot different than a, a residential type report. Normally that's going to be like three or four pages. This one's going to probably be 100 pages. And, it's affiliated with Energy Star, the grant that just came out of us from EPA, and so we're 
uh, my company is an Energy Star partner, so I always try to do everything by the Energy Star book and follow their guidelines. And so one of the things that will be in the report, too, the back half, the biggest bulk of it will be the Energy Star uh, guide for energy savings, and there's a tremendous amount of information in that. I think it will give you, you know, some good direction and some ideas and uh, that there is opportunity to save here. The summary page will, will lay out all of the possible uh, energy efficiency measures, and it will give you cost, savings, payback, also the savings to investment ratio over the life of the measure. Might have a five-year payback, might not have a real quick payback, but over the life of it, you might have a real nice savings to investment ratio like LED products that last you know, 13, 14 right. years on a residential basis. Yeah. I look forward to getting his report. Uh, sounds like it's a good deal. This is a house that serves as a temple. This is a house that serves as a temple. Uh, he's used to doing commercial properties now, so he's doing something a little bit different that he hasn't done for a while, but he's clearly an expert at it. Function, it's more like a house, actually, than it is, you know, a larger church, because we've got people around here uh, all the time. I'm pretty interested to see what he's got to say about uh, insulating the walls. Uh, we're very cost conscious. We have a very tiny budget. Nobody has paid anything around here. It's all volunteer. Uh, so we're, uh, we're living on a shoestring. Uh, so the, the, the dollars are going to make a big difference to us. I'm going to urge our board to do what is uh, what would be the most uh, cost beneficial. Uh, the heat sources are the uh, gas boiler and our fireplace, our wood stove. That stove has uh, saved us a lot of money. Even when you add in the wood cost? The wood costs, uh, we don't buy our wood. We, uh, like true youpers, we make our wood. It costs, you know, gas and that sort of thing, but we don't, we don't pay anybody to cut the wood. We do it ourselves. It really opens my eyes to all the little things that when done properly could make a huge difference. I just don't like the idea that all the wood we're burning, the heat is leaking out to the outside, and I'm excited to see what will come from this. Connecting it to my spiritual beliefs, I think it's just good to concentrate your energies effectively, you know, as a human and as a log. American Zen Buddhists tend to be pretty ecologically oriented, uh, and it's obvious to us we live in the world, and we've got to learn how to live in the world. We can't act anymore as if we're kings and queens of the world, and as if we somehow live outside it or above it. Um, and that means that we just have to, uh, we have to, uh, our, our footprint has to be smaller. Crux point here or something. Um, yes, uh, scientists tell us this, that we are reaching a tipping point. And once that bucket tips over, you know, there's no, you, you cannot go back. Um, and I think maybe a, a pe there are, uh, people don't always realize that. It's not, you know, a gentle slope up or down, but it's a, it's a tipping point. Uh, and so we need to be aware of that. But the bottom line is, is if we do the things and are good stewards, it's going to take care of global warming. It's going to help it, you know? If it's true, if it's not, all we've done is make the planet better. So, you know, like, come on, people, what's wrong? You know, what's hard about this? This is just, let's just do what's right. The two-year project is funded by the EPA Great Lakes Restoration Initiative in cooperation with Anishinaabe Native American tribes and 10 faiths representing 250 churches and temples. A priority of Earth Keepers too is helping prevent airborne mercury and other toxins that pollute the Great Lakes. Energy savings mean that you're using less electricity or less natural gas. Um, both of these sources of energy uh, have unfortunate byproducts, and that's pollution. By being able to minimize the amount of energy you're using, that means you're also being able to minimize the amount of pollution being created uh, through the generation of that energy. And so each project that results in energy savings also results in envir environmental benefits, pollution prevention, the direct pollution prevention impact. And that involves not only uh, mercury, uh, but it also involves several other pollutants that have obviously a, a negative impact on the environment. And so we'll be able to show the EPA, based on its own calculator, what positive impact we're having on the environment in the Great Lakes Basin. Earthkeepers 2 is sponsored by 10 faith traditions.
Roman Catholic, Episcopal, Jewish, Lutheran, Presbyterian, United Methodist, Baha'i, Unitarian Universalist, and Zen Buddhist. To further reduce airborne mercury, Earthkeepers 2 educates congregations about ways to make their homes more energy efficient. Churches and temples and also homeowners, if they search them, save money. Utility companies in the state of Michigan uh, currently have incentive programs in place so that if you are looking to upgrade your energy systems by using newer technology in, in lighting or in heating, that whether it be a heating system, a water heater, or your boiler in your home or your furnace, uh, or changing out light bulbs uh, from compact fluorescent to, to LED, that there are incentive, incentives available through the utility companies that will lower your costs. Um, and that's, that's the other thing that we want, need to make people aware of is that, yes, these may seem more expensive, but there are incentives in place to decrease the cost. And of course, with each of these new technologies, you're looking at greater efficiency and longer life. So you replace a light bulb now from a CFL to an LED and there is no mercury in an LED and it will last many times longer than a CFL. For a homeowner there actually is a, you can do it after the fact. There's, a, there's an application uh, on your utility company's website that you can fill in you know what you've done, uh, show, show the, the receipts that go with each of these purchases and you can submit that to the utility company and there'll be a, a rebate coming back to you, an incentive payment. Um, for commercial customers, uh, it, tr it truly is an incentive program. The utility company needs to, to know what you're doing before you do it. And if, as long as they're involved on the front end, that there are incentive payments that will come back to you for each of the measures that you purchase. Among the urgent life-saving issues addressed by the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and its strategic partners, cleaning up toxins, combating invasive species, protecting watersheds from polluted runoff, and restoring wetlands and other wildlife habitat. I'm Greg Peterson, the Earthkeepers 2 Volunteer Media Advisor.